It has been many months since I had a very vivid experience, but I want to share a recent, um, it was a dream, but it was so full color, three dimensional, uh, the sounds and the, and the voices and the people that were there, it was very, very specific, or it was very, very clear. And then I'm going to give you something that I feel like I should share with you very briefly. In this particular dream, which recently happened, and again, I'm going to call it a dream slash vision because of it being very realistic. Uh, we were with a family that we've actually been on vacation with before. It's a very large family of uh, people that I have known when Pam and I were married. In fact, the man who is a retired minister actually performed the ceremony, the wedding ceremony for my wife, Pam and I in North Pearl, Alabama on April the 2nd in 1982. So we're very close to this family. And as I said, we've actually been on vacation once with them. In this particular experience, we were on vacation with this family again, and we were staying in a coastal area right off the ocean, which is where we had previously stayed several years back on a vacation with our families together. I was um, remember seeing some of the young people, some of them are now married because when they rent, a there are so many kids and grandkids that you have to rent like a three story house to accommodate everybody, a, a big condominium. And we were there again in a location. I do not know where it was. It would have been more than likely the East Coast of the United States because we would not all take a trip to the West Coast. It would have been the East Coast. But what happened was very, very clear. I can still see it right now. I had actually gone to the kitchen and was preparing to put some dishes after we'd eaten a meal in a dishwasher. A uh, pastor who is a older retired man had been walking on the beach and he came in and uh, he was moving a little bit slow, but he'd come in and we were talking a little bit and uh, some of the kids were there. And so all of a sudden I looked out the window and there in the distance I saw this massive wave coming, and it was, I mean, it was large. I can't e estimate how long, tall it was. And I screamed, guys, it's a tsunami. Get upstairs, get to the third floor as fast as you can. Run, run. And I remember that uh, by the, I, I, there, were, there was not a lot of people at the beach. It was kind of a private area, but the people there were running toward the condominiums that were on the beach. Apparently they were staying there as well. And I knew that unless some of them really ran fast, they would not make it. And I was very concerned about that. Well, immediately the, the younger people in the family began to run. I said, you got to run. My first thought in the dream and every tsunami dream I've ever had, I think about this. First of all, there's going to be a, a, a water supply problem because of the pipes of the dirt that's going to be in the water. So in my dreams, I would always go to an upstairs area and start filling up a tub with the water that was present in the pipeline. The sinks were filled up the tubs. And in this case, I'm thinking we've got to get upstairs and start filling up the tub, tubs in case we need drinking water. But by the time I got around to the front door, I was helping the pastor up the steps and I mean the kids were running and not just children but these uh, adult kids in their 20s and 30s and I remember looking back and water had already crashed into um, the area and out the front door and the front door windows I could see it looked like a river was forming and it was just waves toppling and, and things cars had been picked up already and I'm thinking oh my this is serious and we started heading upstairs and my, my two thoughts were to put water in the tubs, plug up the tubs and the sinks with water as fast as you can for any kind of drinking water necessary. And number two was, oh my goodness, we should have grabbed some snacks because this family, and when we all get together in the past, you know, everybody always purchases chips and snacks and all kinds of things uh, like that. And I was thinking, but by the time that we got to the middle of the uh, first set of steps, it was too late to go back into the kitchen area to try to find something. And I remember thinking in this experience, oh my, here again is what I saw about a tsunami coming. I do believe what I'm about to tell you. Now, first of all, that many times when, and I'm going to teach you something about dreaming or visions here, that many times when you have a dream or an experience, it doesn't mean it's going to happen immediately, but many times it's a warning uh, in advance to be in prayer and to, tr to keep your spirit sensitive toward the situations that you're dreaming about. When I saw the World Trade Center many years ago, 1996, shrouded in black, and I saw those grayish tornadoes coming off with paper and pop cans in it, I had no idea what it meant. 
when the Trade Center, when the planes went into the Trade Center on 9-11 and the buildings collapsed and all those gray clouds came, I just literally was stunned because it's exactly what I described to people years before of seeing. And so it took approximately five years or so before the actual vision, and, I, and, I, and I, sometimes you hear me say dream vision, but this was a vision uh, of the 9-11 attack before it actually happened. And I was puzzled. I said, what does this mean? And I did state, and it's on video somewhere, uh, a, a teaching my dad and I did back in the day, uh, that there would be an attack on the Trade Center, and it did happen that way. I do not know, but when I put out these experiences of tsunamis, I am stunned at the number of people that will comment, uh, let's say on the Perry Stone Ministries Facebook page, I had a dream, I had a dream, uh, I had a vision, I saw this, and it's almost exactly the things we're seeing. Now, the reason I'm sharing that with you is one verse of scripture in Luke's gospel says that in the last days, the sea and the waves would be roaring and men's hearts filling them for fear of looking after the things coming to pass upon the earth. In the days of Noah, the fountains of the deep were open and it rained. There was water coming from two directions, from a crack in the earth and from the water rain coming out of heaven. And of course, the cracks in the earth were the plates of the oceans shifting, which would have created massive tsunamis around the world. The point I wish to make is, as it was in the days of Noah, the main substance involved in Noah's day was water. And I do believe that the sea and the waves roaring, and that word roaring in the Greek is the Greek word that we get the word echo from, an echo sound. And anyone that's lived through a tsunami will tell you there's this echo sound that actually comes from the sea. Uh, those in the Indonesian tsunami several years ago described it as almost a, a roaring sound coming from the water before it ever struck. Those clips that you saw were from the movies The Day After Tomorrow, The Fifth Wave, and Deep Impact. I also wanted to show you how uh, the Illuminati card game actually has some stuff that correlates with the video that we're making today. And uh, the first card here is called Tidal Wave. All right. 
and it shows a, a beachfront property uh, getting uh, hit by a massive tidal wave. Now, I also want to show you this one I find very interesting because uh, in the movie The Day After Tomorrow and also in the movie Deep Impact, you see a giant wave uh, coming at New York, all right? And like I said uh, in past videos that I've made, the Illuminati loves to tell us what they're going to do to us, all right? And so they have this card called Global Warming, and it shows, once again, the Statue of Liberty underwater, all right? And I find that very, very interesting. So in three different places, it's confirmed, you know, uh, through propaganda, that uh, there's going to be a, uh, a tsunami wave that is going to come and, and um, consume New York City. Check this video out on how it's very possible that a tsunami could happen at any point in time. Nuclear explosions have strange effects when they're detonated in other unconventional places, for example, like space, where a nuclear blast can create an electromagnetic pulse or EMP effect that can fry or disable electronics. And apparently, a nuclear blast underwater can create something potentially even worse. A tsunami, and not just any tsunami, a half kilometer tall, radioactive, apocalypse scale tsunami. The only country in the world that's apparently been crazy enough to develop a weapon like this so far is, unsurprisingly, Russia. The weapon's official name is Status 6 Oceanic Multipurpose System, and its codename is Poseidon. The first public report of the weapon system dates back to September 2015, and the details are genuinely insane. It's a weapon so powerful it seems like it should belong in a bad science fiction movie, and yet it's apparently quite real. Poseidon is an unmanned drone in the shape of a torpedo that can be loaded onto and launched by a submarine. A Poseidon drone could also remain dormant in a box on the ocean floor, just waiting for a signal to come back to life before carrying out its apocalyptic attack, like a Reaper from Mass Effect. Either way, once a Poseidon is armed and activated, it can have a range of 10,000 kilometers, and it slowly travels across the ocean ominously towards its target over a period of weeks or even months. The drone travels so slowly in order to avoid detection. But when it's nearby an enemy coastline, it rushes ahead at over 100 miles per hour to get close enough to detonate its nuclear bomb before it's detected. The bomb that the Poseidon drone carries is allegedly the most powerful nuclear device ever created, capable of unleashing a completely insane 200 megatons of explosive power and all of it underwater. For reference as to why that's insane, the biggest bomb ever tested by humanity so far was the Tsar Bomba by the Soviet Union. That bomb destroyed every building in a 55 kilometer radius, caused third degree burns 100 kilometers away, and shattered windows that were 900 kilometers away. It was detonated here in Novaya Zemlya and shattered windows all the way over here in northern Norway and Finland. The shock wave from the explosion circled the entire Earth three times, and despite all of that awesome power, it was only 50 megatons. The Poseidon bomb has four times that amount of power. Unleashing that amount of raw power underwater is allegedly enough to generate a 500 meter high tsunami wave in the direction of an enemy's coastline. That wave would be so high that it's almost impossible to fully appreciate. So here is what the Empire State Building would look like right next to it. The 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami that devastated Indonesia only reached a maximum height of only 30 meters, and is over 16 times shorter than the Poseidon tsunami. What's even worse though, is the Poseidon nuclear bomb is apparently a cobalt bomb, specifically designed to unleash more radioactive fallout than a normal nuclear bomb. This not only makes the wave freakishly huge, but also intensely radioactively contaminated. So now imagine you're just chilling, hanging out on the coast, and you notice a 500 meter high radioactive death tsunami bearing down on you. What would you do in that situation? The weapon is apparently specifically designed to circumvent the capable US and European missile defense systems. If nuclear missiles are heading towards your country, you can at least try and shoot some of them down before they make an impact and you have a chance. But what chance do you have at stopping a 500 meter high mega tsunami? Once the bomb has gone off underwater, it's already pretty much too late. The tsunami is going to happen. 
This is a simulated flood projection that was developed by the University of Washington if only a 100 megaton bomb was detonated underwater off the coast of Long Island. But even a 100 megaton bomb would apparently flood the entirety of Long Island, all of New York City, and significant portions of Connecticut, New Jersey, and other areas. As mentioned previously, the Poseidon bomb has double that amount of power. A 500 meter high tsunami would be taller than every single building in New York except for the One World Trade Center, and it would still be very close. Everything in the city would be destroyed, and the highly radioactive water would linger around and poison the ground and the drinking supply. It would be absolutely catastrophic, and the Russian Navy has allegedly already ordered 30 Poseidon armed drones to enter into service. Real quick before we get off of here, I want to show you this picture that was made quite a while back pertaining to what people think America will look like uh, once coastal tsunamis hit everywhere and that there's major earthquakes that happen that they expect to happen, all right? Uh, there's people in the past that have uh, come out with a map that even the Navy has that's very similar to this map, all right? And I, what I find interesting is, is that you can't find the Navy map anywhere anymore. It's almost like Google's completely deleted it off the internet. And so I found this one, though, that looks very similar to what I had seen back in the day when I was researching this. But I had remembered this and wanted to put this in this video. And so, uh, you know, it's very possible that earthquakes could cause these tsunamis. It's very possible that the Poseidon missile could cause these tsunamis. But what we do know is, is that this stuff is coming. God's people are hearing about it time and time again in their dreams. And there's so many people that are confirming the same word. Um, so I wanted to get this on record. Um, I have never had a, um tsunami wave dream in my before till last night I don't know where I was um I had a vision where the Statue of Liberty and F and a lot of the idols around the world were destroyed but uh, last night um, I was in this really tall building with people I don't know and there were people that live there and there was also like a sh some kind of common area like uh where there was food and and people they just lived on this i guess the top floor um of this really big building and i realized at the time i was in the spirit i was not physically there i was on the outside looking in but i was able to kind of interact with the environment and all of a sudden, these people were sitting on their couch with their back to the window that looks out from this building. And all of a sudden, this wave came. I'm not joking. It was so powerful that it, it immediately swept the people in this top level up. <clears throat> and they were all screaming. In the dream, it was me and my wife. We were in our house and we were just doing our regular stuff around the house where all of a sudden we see coming into the house water. As water starts to come and pour into the house, we leave the house, take the keys, take the wallet, take the phone, take the stuff we need and run out the house up this huge flight of stairs. And as we're running up this flight of stairs, I remember telling people, I said, God's done with it. I said, he's tired of the homosexuals. He's tired of people living in sin. He's tired of people fornicating. He gave you time to repent. And the same God that flooded Noah, Noah's age, is the same God that's about to flood you. Repent so you can make it up. And when I said repent so you can make it up, it was to make it up this long staircase that was a very tall platform. And people were, were dressed however they wanted to be on the beach. They said they laughed at me as well as the rush of other people that were with me to go up these stairs. So we, me and my wife go up these stairs and we're looking down from the balcony and we could see this massive tsunami. Y'all, it was like the size of a skyscraper. Hit the West Coast, hit the beaches and kill everyone on the beaches. We gotta go. Water being pulled out like that's a tsunami. We gotta get out of the bay now. 